What's going on guys? Welcome back to WDYD CSP. What do you do as a central sterile processor? Guys, today I want to go back to basics and talk about the cleaning of basic instruments, clamped instruments. I am not going to go over the specific type of clamp instruments because there are so many. Um, clamp type instruments are also called forceps or thumb uh, uh, ring forceps um, because they have rings at the end. Um, one of the basic things with clamps is that um, anatomy wise, no matter what kind of instrument it is, there is a working end known as the jaw. There is a union known as the box locks. There's the shanks or the legs of the instruments. There's the rings of the instruments. And importantly, not all of them have them, um, but the, uh, I can probably some of the dissectors don't, but uh, most clamps and clamps meaning clamping shut have a ratcheting mechanism, okay? Whether that may be an interlocking one or one with a little lever, there's a ratcheting part of the instrument. So let's talk how the expectation is when we get these instruments into our decontamination area so that we can clean them properly. First and foremost, this is gonna be a generalized cleaning. I believe cleaning is a should be a generalized function. You rinse the instrument, you clean the instrument, you rinse it again, okay? During the cleaning process, there's five basic principles that must exist to uh, effectively clean an instrument or any device. It is time, temperature, concentration, contact, and friction. If any of those uh, steps are missed um, in the cleaning process, you are not gonna effectively clean an instrument. It is important that you follow those rules. The IFUs of specific instrumentation companies are different. Um, even though it may be the same instrument, the cleaning instructions may be completely different. So please be mindful of that. But as I stated, I'm just gonna talk general. How do we expect our instruments to be delivered to decontamination? Honestly, we're expecting them that when point of, tr point of use treatment is uh, conducted, that the instruments almost look like they were never used. There shouldn't be gross soil on there. There shouldn't be caked on or coagulated blood on the working ends of the instrument. There should be moistened either with a pretreatment or a moistened towel over the instrument to keep them moist so that we can easily remove the soils, okay? Quick anatomy of clamped instruments. Again, it is important that we concentrate on the working end, which is the jaw and the box lock. Those are the areas of the instruments that is usually um, covered in gross soil. Yes, um, there will be blood on the handles because oftentimes surgeons or even scrub techs are asked to retract um, using our hands or hold um, a specific area of the anatomy um, to assist in surgery. Surgeons like to uh, dissect with their fingers. Um, so yes, you will see blood on the handles as well. But let's talk about what we're doing in decon. So if, our, if we do have a three sink process, and I'm only gonna talk as to what it is we should be seeing. Three sink process, every facility and every vendor and there's always opinions of how the three sync setup should be. And I'm not gonna go into that, but for my purposes, my first sink is my rinse sink. My second sink is my soaking and cleaning sink. My third sink is gonna be my final critical water uh, rinse, okay? What is the purpose of my first sink for the rinse? Well, again, although I expect my instruments to come um, looking like they were not used, there are instances where there is some soil, gross soil, visible soils, and if there's pretreatment, I wanna get that off the instruments before I soak. Reason being the why, you do not wanna mix chemical. That is an OSHA violation, do not mix chemicals. So, you wanna rinse your instruments, you wanna get rid of that gross soil. Some soils do not rinse off very easily, so the use of a brush can be used under running water to help remove those gross soils, right? You can even use a moist, a moistened non-linting towel or rag and do the same thing, right? 
You want to rinse your instrument very well. You want to open it up in a full open position. Okay, and you want to place it into your soaking slash cleaning sink. In this sink, the purpose of the soak and the cleaning is you want to give the chemical the time needed to break down the soils so that they can be removed easily. Again, remember I told you time, temperature, concentration, contact, and friction are very important. So before you start, before you place this in your detergent and you're going crazy trying to get off that baked on soil, let the chemical do its job. Think of it this way. If you ever cooked rice and it burnt on the bottom of your pan and you tried to take that take that to the sink and use a steel wool pad to try to remove that burnt on rice, you're going to have, you're going to struggle. But if you allow water and detergent to sit in that, in that, in that pot or wherever you cook your rice at, and you allow it to sit for a little bit, give it that contact, that time and that right constant, and then you pour that out you can almost wipe that clean with very little effort. Same principles with your instruments. Allow the contact time that's dictated by either the manufacturer of the instrument or the manufacturer of the chemistry, whichever one is greatest, not the least, the greatest. That's the one you go with. After your contact time, you wanna use either a soft bristle brush or whatever, it's in the IFU, to work off those soils that are either visible or non-visible, working all the aspects of the instrument and placing it into the final uh, sink. Now, I know we usually group instruments in twos, threes, fours, fives, and we do this. It's important that we hit both sides of the instrument. So in technicality, te technically when we clean instruments, we should be cleaning them one by one. Yes, it's time consuming. And again, time is not our friend, but if we want to do it right, this is the correct way to do it. Once in your um, rinse, your final rinse sink, the final rinse is to remove any residual detergent and any debris that might have uh, adhered back onto the instrument. Because remember, we're moving it out of water. And even though there's chemistries in there to remove, um, to prevent the soil from um, re-adhering onto the instruments, as we're pulling this out of the water, it's possible that a piece of debris might have stuck back on. So we wanna get rid of all that residual chemistry so that it can stop working and any residual soil that may have re-adhered back onto the instrument. The final step in your cleaning is drying your instrument. This is manual cleaning, guys. Rinse and dry your instrument thoroughly before sending over to the prep and pack side. A quick note on cleaning. If you're manually preparing your instruments, you're following the same steps except that you're not doing all that scrubbing and brushing in the soap water, okay? That step there is required to loosen the soils so that the mechanical action of the automated cleaners can easily remove their soils. This may be an ultrasonic cleaner or it may be a washer disinfector. Now there's several debates as to whether that step of soaking is required in my opinion, it should be um, because I wouldn't put in dried up eggs or oatmeal into my washer if I didn't soak it to loosen it up and remove that visible soil. All right, guys, as always, stay true to yourselves. Keep it 100. And until next time, peace.